Good afternoon, gardeners. It's the day after Christmas in 2020, and it's a beautiful warm day here in Fullerton in Southern California. I want to show you a project I've been working on this fall on this hot, dry slope. I'm standing here at the side of what I call the Northwest Slope. It's a south or southeast facing slope. For most of spring, summer, and fall, it gets full sunshine all day long, except in the very late afternoon. And even in late fall and winter, it gets full afternoon sunshine. So I had some problems here. Number one, it was too hot for most of the year. Two, there was excessive water runoff because the slope was too steep. And three, there was another reason the water didn't soak in, and that was due to the hard packed decomposed granite on the surface. This seemed challenging, but actually, these are very common problems. To sum up, the DG was too impermeable, the steep slope allowed water to run off rather than soak in, and the slope was blasted by the sun for the better part of three seasons. I'm going to tell you about my experience of gardening on this slope. Then I'll go over what I've done recently to try and fix some of my past failures. I'll begin by showing you what things looked like about five and a half years ago when we first moved in. Back then, this slope was covered with water-loving grass, but at that point, Southern California was well into a five-year drought, and the city of Fullerton had begun water rationing, as had other cities. The previous owners had been watering the extensive lawns on a daily basis. But after rationing began, we were limited to watering only twice a week. As a result, the lawns suffered and they began to turn brown in spots. So we decided to remove the lawn and replace it with something else. Eventually, we developed a plan that involved plants that were less thirsty and more drought tolerant than a traditional lawn. We hired a landscaping company that had experience with California native plants. Over here, they stripped off all the grass. Then they began adding boulders and decomposed granite. So they planted the native plants in the clayey soils and then covered the whole area with two inches of decomposed granite. Here are some photos of what the slope looked like at the very beginning of the project and then at several different times since then. But my most recent problem has been that this slope looked better the summer before last than it did last summer. So I began to look back on what my experience had been up on this slope and on how many plants I had lost. We had lost all the original Ceanothus and the Manzanita except for several that were planted in shade. That should have been a lesson to me and a warning, but I dutifully kept replacing the dead plants. That is, up until recently when I began to realize that I could keep doing this the very same way, but my plants were simply not going to thrive on this slope unless I did something more. Here is the plan I've hit on. It involves terracing the slope with rock-lined planters and adding a fast-draining soil to the planters. Terracing is done all over the world in hilly or mountainous areas. It allows farmers to grow crops where they couldn't otherwise be grown. Terracing simultaneously improves water absorption and reduces runoff. To create terraces, I've made these rock-lined planters that basically stair-step down the slope. Then in each of the terrace planters, I've added a loamy potting soil over the existing decomposed granite. So now each new planter area has a flatter surface than before, which will help reduce excessive runoff. The soil I've added is Kellogg Palm, Cactus, and Citrus mix. I've had a lot of experience with it, and I know it works well with native plants. This loamy, fast-draining planting mix will allow water to soak in much better than it did on the hard-packed decomposed granite. 
Already I can tell that water does soak in much better. There's still some runoff, but it's much less than before. So far, the new plants are doing well. Over here, I'll show you the final step I'm going to do. This will give you a pretty good idea of what I'm trying to accomplish. One, as I've said, I've created terraces, and two, I've added the fast-draining potting soil. The third and final thing I've done here is to add a one to two inch layer of gravel. It will hold the moisture in the soil longer and better than if the soil were exposed to the sun. So that's what I've done here, and I plan to do the same thing in all of the new planters on this slope. I guess the overall point is that when you're faced with what looks like a severe microclimate liability, Perhaps if you look at it in another way, you can see it as an opportunity. The problems on this slope were excessive heat combined with two related problems. The surface of the DG was too impermeable to allow water to soak in, and the slope was so steep that too much water ran off anyway. Maybe more shade trees would have blunted the effect of the hot sun. But you can't make a good shade tree overnight, nor even in a few years. So there wasn't much I could do about the sun. But I could change the slope gradient by terracing the slope with planters, and I could add soil to flatten the terraces, plus a good fast draining soil that would help water to soak in even more, and finally a layer of three quarter inch gravel that would further reduce runoff and help hold the moisture in the ground. I feel good about this. I think it will help improve things on this slope. It's too soon to tell, of course, but why don't you check back with me next summer or fall and we'll see how things are progressing. After I sign off, I'll show some views of a few things that are still blooming here at the very beginning of winter. So from here in Fullerton, California, this is Rob Briggs reporting live and wishing you two things, a happy new year and happy gardening.